Oh, yes! Hi, everybody. My name's Gavin Boyer, and welcome back. Today, we're listening to Disguise by Motionless and White. I don't know much about Motionless and White from what I know. I know about my brother, and he's recommended me good music in the past. So I'm even more excited to delve into more metal music. We're on to track number one, Disguise. Get up, get up! Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is the kind of energy I needed. This is definitely the kind of energy I needed. This is a perfect way to start off the album. The main singer reminds me of something maybe Marilyn Manston esque. I know it's obviously their own thing, but like that's the first thing I can kind of think of. <laughs> I like their heavier stuff a lot, actually, um, already. I, I think I know a few songs by them already, um, just because recommendations from my brother. From what I know, they can do heavy stuff really, really well. So I'm kind of curious to see where they'll go, because they've already hit such an incredible high with the first song on their album already. Yeah, like the energy is never really decreasing at all. Like they're keeping and maintaining the same energy throughout the course, which is really, really nice. You know, you kind of want that. You don't want you don't want it to dip off. Sick of digging for answers while you bury the truth. Fuck your methods to my sadness, I will bury you. Dig! Yeah. Oh. If that's what the breakdown sounds like in their first song, I'm in for a treat. It's it's gonna be a lot of fun. You can't turn down anger. You can't silence pain. You will not put out the fire that burns in me. I sell my soul to my disguise. I hid myself to stay alive. <laughs> nice incorporation of that kind of childlike chimes in the beginning i don't really know how to describe that exactly but it's um it's got this creepy eeriness factor to it that really i think melds into their sound really really well <laughs> Front of number two, headache. Some days I'm narcissistic. Some days I'm in my way. Some days I try to sleep with pins and needles in my brain. Some days I feel sadistic. A portrait of my pain. A really tortured kind of person, or at least um, what he's describing, at least. Some days I'm narcissistic. Some days I'm in my way. Some days I try to sleep with pins and needles in my brain. Like, this could just be more of um, a description of headaches in general. But, like, I think it's more of a kind of a bigger picture headache. Some days I live in fear that I am every fucking thing I like. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Oh. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Follow 
me down under the skin I am doubt, feeding the flies in my mouth through my eyes. No. No, no, no. Like, are you okay? <laughs> a lot of this seems pointed at himself, I believe. Some days I live in fear that I'm every fucking thing I hate. Some days I feel addictive. Some days I feel alone. Some days I fear the worst in me is the best you'll ever know. Some days I feel the static with everyone I know. Some days I feel like I just want to slay a motherfucker's throat. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut up, shut up, shut up. It seems to me kind of just getting into the nitty gritty of uh, the awful people in the world, the people that you don't want to be around, the people that are invading your mind. Um, and that really kind of influences you in a way to the point where you want to you want to do some bad things. You want to do some bad things. thing's for sure my neck is going to be sore by the end of this but you know that's more of a good thing than a bad thing that's 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 a sign that they're doing things right i know that i'm gonna be fine i know that i'm gonna be fine i know that i'm gonna be fine oh god am i gonna be fine bright lights am i dead or alive my god is there so much pain in his voice um, I noticed that earlier in Disguise, uh, where he said anger, where he was, like, breaking down. Um, but also here as well, like, I can just hear the utter disgust, in a way. I to deal with the devil inside. Oh, God. I'm gonna be fine! Oh. What an epic way to kind of build that up and to get this huge, huge release. Um, this is this is incredible. You know, this is the kind of song you want to put on when you don't want anybody to mess with you. Round of number three, code. Everything you know in the focus within the moment. Do not ask a question why. Listen to the sound of the virus. You can't deny this. Get up and amplify! Yeah, they really don't mess with any time. They're kind of just like in your face instantly, you know, they they grab you. That's how they bring you into the song, and that's that's super incredible. Getting less intensity from this one. I know I'll probably put my foot in my mouth later on in the song, but like this one seems to be more um, rock inspired. I may have spoken too soon. <laughs>
I do really love the kind of intermixing of, you know, more hard rock and then just like pure metal in there. Um, really, really smooth blend. Between the gray, we medicate and hypnotic unity. Another band that they kind of really remind me of is Breaking Benjamin. Obviously, you know, two separate worlds, but like uh, something about them really reminds me of Breaking Benjamin. Maybe the way they pronounce their words, but definitely not the sound. Sonically, not really the same thing. I'm noticing a lot of kind of electronic elements that are happening throughout the background of their music. Um, that was very apparent in Disguise because it kind of opened up to that kind of, you know, childlike electronic sound. And this one, um, you could definitely hear it faintly in the background, but it seems to be, it seems to be kind of like a common sound throughout their music so far. <laughs> oh that's a lot of fun that's a lot of fun i love kind of playing around with the sound of that kind of adding in these like sporadic bursts that kind of just come out of nowhere also adding to the electronic part of their music i suppose Round right number four, thoughts and prayers. The double foot pedal, the the, the screaming, the build-up, like, I'm sure that their live shows are absolutely insane. Maybe a little bit dangerous, but, you know, that's kind of the fun part, right? great if you subscribe to the channel and leave a like it helps me out in a huge way and lets me know that you're interested in seeing more videos on motionless and white do it now so pray for me when you're the one so blames don't think of me when you go up in flames don't pray for me when you're the one in flames They definitely have really, really kind of impactful choruses, and they come in with a bang every single time. Um, that's one of the things that I'm highly critical of when it comes to metal or rock or pop music in general, is just um, really lackluster choruses, but that's really not the case here. Uh-oh. Uh, 
I smell a breakdown coming. As soon as like the fast paced guitar strumming comes in and then maybe like a drum roll, like they're gonna freak out. They're gonna freak out. So get ready and uh, and rock with me. You know that I can't hear you. The holy well is dry. So when you face the truth, open your fucking eyes. That's just, that's just beating you down. And like the best way possible, right? You, you know exactly what I mean when I say beating you down. Like, oh, I mean, yeah, even after hearing like four of their songs, like I, I know immediately that seeing them live would be kind of, it would just be different. They would have a different energy, but like probably way better. Greater you are the violence, you fabricate the scratch. Reject to fill your pockets, what's your quietest counterfeit? You love to play the dead song, can I kill an amen? And you can't unlike yourself, why you have this crown of They're kind of putting the, uh, you know, the public officials on blast whenever they they say they care about a certain cause or something like that. You know, something terrible happens when in reality they're putting on like a fake face just to gain money, to gain income. Number five is Legacy. Forged in blood, etched in bone, the sacrifice, the war we know. I can feel it in my veins, laced with gold, but rich with pain. I want to say that each of the songs that we've heard so far has actually given us something quite different. Um, the coding one, for sure, was a lot more electronic. Disguise was heavy. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Each song definitely had its own kind of element. Nothing is ever given till you work for it. The choices that we make echo eternity. So to me, that means they're kind of uh, talking about themselves, talking about the type of legacy they want to leave behind, right? I like that. I like that. What kind of scars will you leave? What kind of blood will you bleed? When fear sets the stage for defeat, what will your legacy be? So, you know, what kind of impact will you have on the world? It's it's obviously, I think it's a little more focused on them. But, you know, that question can be applied to anybody. You know, what kind of impact are you going to leave on the world? Will people remember you? What have you done to, you know, make somebody's life better? It's night, the beds are cold. Live or die, our truth be told. I can hear it in my chains. Requiem for better days. And I will fear not my death or destiny because death bears me. I think out of the ones I've heard so far, this is probably my least favorite, but you know, that's all due to um, personal taste. I like hearing more like 
hard rock mixed in with like heavy metal. Um, so something more akin to disguise is more my taste for this type of music. I could definitely see the impact this would have on people that listen to their music kind of religiously, right? Like it's it's kind of big. It's kind of big, especially for motionless and white themselves. people that know Motionless White, give me some context on the band members. I don't know any of their names. So if I could get information on the main singer, uh, that would be fantastic because he uh, is, he's impressive. So everybody stand up, this up, never gonna give up. I'm lightning, no fear, just to try to We're on to track six, Undead Ahead 2, The Tale of the Midnight Ride. <laughs> oh, no way, no way. You're, you're listening to this during Halloween. That's like the ultimate vibe. This is like... Um, this is like the Headless Horseman's theme song or something like that. It, it feels very appropriate. Unholy Ghost of Crane's Delirium. So that does kind of reference um, the Headless Horseman because Ichabod Crane, who is um, the main protagonist of the story, right, is kind of searching after the Headless Horseman. The wind and whispers, the moonlit fog ignites. With you suffer as witness, the blood will get right to Oh, this is this is absolutely fantastic. So I was right about the headless horseman aspect, right? Because obviously the pumpkin rides tonight. Well, I wonder if there is a music video to this one because it does feel very um, picturesque in a way. Um, I could definitely see a story to this one. Bloody does he, bloody does he storm through the gateway. I love that. That's that's just like music to my ears. Fitting into this Halloween-esque kind of mood. The Halloween bells, the, the stomping of the horse, like, it's just creepy all the way through. I killed that witch has no soul or life to take. The blood of our beloved, the last injustice crime. Crimson. Take a second to realize how gruesome this is. Crimson coagulates, um, blood drying out, severed head bouquet. I don't really need to describe that one. Body incomplete, sealer of your fate, crimson calligraphy written on the trees. <laughs> I love 
this. I love the whole ambiance of the track. The little uh, la 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 la. Like little kids are terrifying. Metal music is pretty much perfect for a Halloween esque kind of song. <laughs> That, you know, that bridge right there might be my favorite part on the album so far because it all kind of came together. Um, you know, the the bells of the Halloween sound, the, the children singing in the background, damnation on All Hallows' Eve. That is, that is spooky vibe at its peak. crazy or did that stop for a second i thought um you know i thought spotify wasn't working hold on oh yes No, this one, this one might be my favorite. Um, I think there are a lot of tiny parts here and there that kind of make it a really full sound. You know, like that part before the chorus where it just stops. On to track number seven, holding on to smoke. I'm tired of feeling comatose. I've lost the me that I love most. I'm barely holding on to smoke. I'm barely holding on to smoke. So the electronic part of their sound, that's kind of like their thing, right? I know I hear metal bands here and there that maybe mess with it a little bit, but this seems consistent. It seems consistent throughout all their work. I'm not addicted, but I'm not clean. Why do I do this to myself on repeat? So disconnected from my own. Uh, there's a lot of like self-realization i'm not addicted but i'm not clean why do i do this to myself on repeat so disconnected from my own reality you know there's a huge kind of realization there of especially the first line i'm not addicted but i'm not clean you know saying uh most people would say i'm not addicted i'm i'm, I'm totally clean you know i'm totally clean i don't do that anymore uh, but him, he's, you know, he's, he's accepting it. There's, there's acceptance there. I walk alone. bend but i won't break because i define who i become very realized lyrics and i don't know if this is more of a just a general song uh towards people but it seems to be um something the uh, either the singer or one of the band members has kind of dealt with silence on the words left unsaid i feel a sickness for a home i've never been 
And I exist in black and white, but now I'm seeing red. I built a shelter in complacency. Locked myself in it to fire it through away the key. You can't deliver it, I'm afraid to die. So am I living or am I just alive? All my pride, all my shame. I find strength enough to show you. This one seems to be getting a bit deep. Uh, you know, very almost existential questions being asked here and there. Um, so am I living or am I just alive? That's a big difference. Living, to me, means that you are experiencing life. You know, you are experiencing the bad things and the happy things about life. Or am I just alive? Being alive means just um, being physically there. And maybe the mental part is kind of sucked out of you. So that question to him is, uh, it's very existential. God, it almost seems like the deeper we get into this album, the more the the deeper I get into this album, the more and more I like it. The more I'm um, getting in tune with their sound and their lyrics and kind of what they're trying to represent. And I'm I'm here for it. Uh, the last two songs have been probably my favorite on the album. This is just a uh, chilling. I love this. I really do love the lyrical content of this one. And I'm not sure if I haven't just been paying attention to the rest of the songs or not, but um, this one seems deeper. It seems deeper than uh, maybe a little of the other ones seem to be. I may bend, but I won't break, Round to number eight, another life. If I can't let you go, will darkness divide? For the fiction of love is the truth of our lies. We were playing for keeps, but we both knew the cost. Now the only way out in your heart shaped box. Talking about two individuals, probably a relationship, right? For the fiction of love is the truth of our lies. We were playing for keeps, but we both know the cost. So it seems like a separation. But I hate that it seems you were never alone. We were broken and bleeding, but never gave up. And I hate that I made you the enemy. And I hate that your heart was the casualty. The emotion that is put into these songs is huge, right? Whether it be, you know, screaming your, your face out at a certain subject, at religion, or, you know, dealing with a heartbreak, it's, it's all done in what seems like a very real way. Um, I, I see a lot of this as truth, right? Uh, and I say that because I know sometimes, um, you know, musicians make music and it doesn't feel truthful. You know, you don't you don't feel the heartbreak, you don't feel the anger, but with motionless and white it it bleeds through. With 
Okay, so for people that know Motion This in White, what is some of the context behind this relationship? Because it seems deep. As we rest here alone, like notes on a page, the finest to compose cannot play our pain. In short, their pain together was huge. But I can't close my eyes for it. Oh, it is there where you The spectrum of emotion on this album so far is huge. Um, you know, we, we've gotten so many kind of different tastes of what it's like to be a human being in pain. Um, and I'm sure a lot of these feelings are shared, but obviously this is um, a very specific instance of one human being's life. I wish the best for you. Is it too late to Even if this one is more heartbroken, it's still one of the stronger tracks on the album to me so far. The longer we go into the album, the better and the better the songs become. Round number nine, broadcasting from beyond the grave, Death Inc. Good evening. You're listening to Broadcasting from Beyond the Grave. Tonight's chilling episode, Death Incorporated. <laughs> it's about what I expected, but it still, it still caught me off guard. I love it. I love it. I love the switch up, you know, from the last like heartbroken song to this one, which is way more electronic, Marilyn Manson esque, more kind of, you know, bob your head type of thing than um, pouring your heart out. to prove we are the weirdos in your stereo disco freak show <laughs> we are the weirdos in your stereo disco freak show death incorporated this is interesting uh, because you know the song kind of started off as this um radio-esque thing like you you're driving and you hear this on the radio so it's interesting to kind of um almost visualize that i would i would want to listen to this one in my car for sure Have they done a collaboration with Ice Nine Kills? Because I definitely think that their vibes would kind of mesh together really, really well. They're both um, spooky, but in kind of different ways. Ice Nine Kills with their true one-to-one -one Horio ratio and Motionless in White with their kind of atmospheric spookiness that they play throughout their entire album. Do you feel like a psycho, dirty needle, rodeo, painting your disease like a digital Picasso, feeling so bad that nobody's gonna need you, spinning in your grave, but nobody's gonna hear you. We are the weirdos in your stereo, disco freak show. I 
do love all the references to like artists and stuff like that. Back in verse one, did you get that memo? Pretty typo, Romeo. Cutting you up like a Van Gogh. Verse two, do you feel like a psycho? Dirty needle rodeo. Pinking your disease like a digital Picasso. All the kind of allusions to like artists like Shakespeare, Van Gogh, Picasso. Really kind of neatly intertwined with the lyrics and I think that's really nice. I don't know, this one seems a little bit goofier. The chorus just really isn't reaching to me. It doesn't have that uh, kind of power aspect to it that I'm necessarily looking for. Like, it, it is powerful, don't get me wrong, but um, something about it isn't quite as memorable to me as some of the others. On to number 10, Brand New Numb. I've got a switchblade wit that cuts like a bitch, and I think you two should meet. <laughs> you know, there have been sprinkles of lyrics like that throughout this album so far. It's been really interesting to me. I want to break free from my humanity. I want to release the animal in me. B -b -b break free your curiosity. That little tapping of that uh, cowbell, whatever the heck you want to call that before the chorus. Um, I love that. I love that. I don't think we've heard that on the album so far, which is always exciting to me. You know, I always love hearing new things incorporated later on into the project. So I could see this as being one of their more popular songs. It kind of has that energy about it. You know, it's something that is memorable, um, pretty quick. You know, the, the, the chorus is basically kind of just repeating the same thing. So it would be something that, you know, people would know. I want to thank you. Come again. That was great. Do you need a receipt? I want to break free from my humanity. Yeah, this, this one does seem um, a bit repetitive, which, you know, usually isn't my cup of tea. That's okay, though. That's okay, though, because I know that a lot of people will love this song. It's just, you know, not necessarily for me. <laughs> like I said, there have been little lyrics here and there that kind of pop out to me. I said, give me liberty or give me death. Ah, oh, fuck it. Just give me death. That was like the last one with um, the, the switchblade for his tongue or whatever he said. I can't remember. <laughs> Let's go! It 
it definitely is building up a lot of traction near the end for what I maybe didn't like in the earlier part of the song. It's definitely making up for it now. Onto the last track, Catharsis. Catharsis in darkness when you can't seem to feel a thing. The absence that haunts you won't hurt much longer. Catharsis. You know, there's there's something that's been consistent on this album so far, and that's been the bass. The bass has been a major standout for me. Um, lots of really cool grooves in here and really just helping support the whole of the song. When you can seem to feel a thing, the absence that haunts you won't hurt much longer. This feeling's getting a bit harder to control. A place to feel completed or a place to be alone. Yeah. It's interesting because they've made a lot of references to like stereo music, radio, headphones, lots of um, like allusions to music in itself and how that can kind of help you. actually um kind of beautiful like the, the song's called catharsis right but it's the catharsis is hidden around darkness right like is in the lyrics catharsis and darkness when you can't seem to feel a thing the absence that haunts you won't hurt much longer even though this is shrouded in darkness um this is something of relief it seems to me um it seems that, you know, a lot of the things talked about earlier on the album are coming to a point where it's where it's less of an issue, you know, um, things are getting better. There is a state of healing. The definition of catharsis is the process of releasing and thereby providing relief from strong or repressed emotions. And that's all we've gotten on this entire album, so it's incredible to kind of get to this you know, this this pinnacle moment and you know, uh, feel that release to see the bright lights divine. Stand in the shadows, entertaining the unknown. The words I always needed like I wrote them on my own. I sing for absolution, for the cleansing of my soul. Narcotic is the beating of our hearts. The words I always needed, like I wrote them on my own. So he does write his own music, um, which is very informative to me because a lot of these experiences he's talked about are probably his own. They can be extracted to um, the general public, of course, you know, because it applies to probably everybody, or at least some people. But it's good to know that um, that this is his struggle. Um, you know, all the things talked about, this is his struggle and this is his way of coping, of writing them down on sheets and, you know, releasing that into the world to, to help others, but mainly to act as an outlet, you know, to get out these emotions, to get out that repressed anger, that repressed uh, kind of feeling that he's been dealing with.
know, what an absolutely beautiful way to kind of cap off the album. This is such a bright moment. This is such a bright moment on the album, even if it is covered in darkness, right? You know? So to get this at the end is um, truly transformative. That's incredible. Um, you know, through the instruments and through his voice, I can feel that release. Uh, I, I need to even re-listen to this album again to kind of get the full context, you know, knowing that it comes to this moment. <laughs> This might be my favorite. I, I think it might be my favorite though after the end of the album. I don't know if it would be my favorite just picking songs out of the album, but like you know, to end the experience, this is this is phenomenal. This is stellar. That was disguised by Emotionless in White, and it was um that was great. That was that was really great. I was actually really surprised by the I was really surprised by the depth of lyricism on some tracks, specifically Holding On to Smoke, Another Life, and Catharsis. Those three were just absolutely breathtaking, absolutely phenomenal, and very truthful, I I, I found to be. This album as a whole? That was it was a really fun experience. Um, lots of really heavy hitting moments um the instrumentation was great i love the um i love the electronic kind of elements that are sprinkled throughout the album also the spookiness of motionless and white really um it's really kind of just apparent the the whole time i don't know if that is i don't know if that is just relating to this album in general but like the the spookiness factor is there and it's it's really cool really kind of eerie i can't wait to listen to this uh during halloween that's going to be the end of the video if you want to see other metal reactions please 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 let me know i'm definitely interested other than that have a beautiful day and i'll see you in the next one okay bye